Hello and welcome to Dell's Gaming and this is from the Depths De Designer where it's not really a, another update but I'm just going to go through some of the little things I have found and just been experimenting with on missiles so this is sort of like a bit of a discussion etc so um, first of all I'd just like to say that um, some people have asked questions or commented on the last video and in YouTube I have tried to reply to some people but it won't let me reply um, and actually the comments show up in my dashboard but they don't seem to show up so that I can reply to them now I don't know if it's a setting on the user side stopping replies but apologies to people I may not have replied to anyway after Let's get on with some firing some missiles. So, first of all, somewhat um, to bring the UI on so I can see actually what I'm controlling. First of all, someone had said about dumb fire missiles, and with the new changes, um, the ejectors and the fact that uh, missiles will glide, etc., I thought this worth a look. First of all, um, a simple little mine launchers, you know, um, how far can you actually get with? Um, one, two, three, or four ejectors on a missile. So um, this is an example of a uh, the small missiles. I'm just firing them all out, and you can see we're getting one was about 200, going out to about here, which is about 600 meters so that's a that's a good old range you're getting with those um shots now these were just with a five degree elevation and i didn't find there was much difference uh by changing the elevation um so these were just 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 simple missiles just with a magnetic head i haven't put anything um unusual on these now one thing is magnetic head that goes up to 140 um, meters on those head I want it nice and low at the moment so it doesn't detect my own ship um, so that the detection range out of magnet mines has increased on all of the sizes so this is the medium launcher I don't think you saw some of those but they are did get launched out there out to about 500 meters so as expected the the small ones got blasted out a little further and again it's a very simple um, system and mag with the magnet mines which now go at 200 meters so these have a, a wider range so uh, previously I think the, the default was 50 they went to 100 so they've doubled at the medium size and the small is okay is 140 that's not bad and the large one just let them explode just come off there and fire now I've just done one at the maximum range just because I think you get the idea of it so um, it's gone out a nice 600 meters actually one of the advantages um, uh, reason the mediums were a little bit shorter was I put four or two gantries on there just to get a reasonable amount of explosives my feeling is that the with the uh, large you only need simply the magnet and the mine that explosive has 40,000 HE damage I don't think you need more than one and also it means it will reload a lot quicker so theoretically um, with magnet warheads um, from a plane even now allow for the fact that yes you have to be further away than the rocket missile bomb whatever you want to call it is going to end up being when that magnet um, activates so if you can have this large um, rocket or mine and activate it all the way out to 285 280 
2.8472 meters for some reason because obviously 285 was just not suitable anyway you want to make sure you're further away than, th than that when this um, magnet activates um, on aircraft if you're flying directly overhead make sure you're high enough otherwise it could well come after you so anyway yes dumb fire missiles um, mine layers seem to the, the seem to have had an advantage I think trying to remember now um, I think my previous uh, systems were going out to about 300 maybe 500 so I think it's a little bit further okay next bit I want to look at is with the new missiles is there a change in speed uh, because one of the changes was that um, if I pick one of the missiles here the medium the short range thruster now has a fixed but very high amount of thrust so um, it's a high high amount of thrust for a very short time lots of fuel usage but that does mean it can get up to a significant speed so here what I've created um, these aren't are some hmm, I would say they're not the ultimate but they're just some high speed missiles so all of them have two approximately two warheads so that they are theoretically effective um, one on the large because again I don't think you'd need more than one HE um, so let's have a look at how these go as far as speed so the four small ones we get up to about 413 meters a second um, and they still get because of that speed they get out to about 2600 meters before um, uh, disappearing so these could be again a dumb fire missile said it at high speed there's uh, with the short range thruster there's there's only start delay or max duration so no other elements now okay here I've got a medium now I've put this ejector here just to show something um, that someone said you can add an ejector to rails um, you can on the large one but not the medium and small you can see how it's red here and it's basically saying not connected and um, also on the large um, I should have gone back here on the large one although I have eight ejectors around here only four are showing as blue and they are the ones that where you have the little what should we call it the little no nodule the green nodule that, that says you can connect these ones have no effect even though it seems to suggest you can have eight just a point of reference there so <laughs> although I had an injector on here it's not having an effect um, so if we go and fire this one and see what speed we get so that's getting up to 400 so the small was 411 and this is about 400 and that hit about 2000 uh, no what was that yeah about 2600 meters again so it's possible to get high speed missiles out of here and we'll do the large one last and that missile 390 so it's still got a considerable amount of speed it's not going to be very agile but um, it is certainly got a, no a certain amount of speed and again 2600 2700 meters so those are the speeds you can expect to get now you can't double um, put two engines in the new system only allows one engine to be selected so you are limited to five seconds of thrust with that short range th thruster so you want to get as much as you can with that thruster so next we've got range people have said oh well you can't get as far yes um, there's a couple of changes the regulators do not give a fixed amount this this uh, help tip here is incorrect it is not an extra 60 seconds it's basically 50 second 50% uh, of the base value 
So as an example, um, the small missile by default has 10 seconds. And I have 10 regulators here, which have given me an extra 50 seconds. So I've got 60 seconds in total. So um, yeah, I had to put a lot of regulators on there and not quite so much on the fuel. And I've reduced the thrust a little bit here. And basically you balance the thrust duration with the lifetime to get a reasonable uh, range. So if I just fire these off now, and that was the wrong one. Let me just select the right missile. So this is the small missile firing at a target I have set up quite a considerable distance away. Now these haven't got many warheads as you can see. They are fairly light on the warheads. I just want to show that yes it is possible to get a reasonable distance or a considerable distance with these missiles. Have they got a lot of uh, warhead potential? No. But you can see that you can balance the distance. They've got a reasonable speed, 98, going up to 100 metres a second. So it, this could be good for, say, a long-range anti-air missile. You could balance it off so that um, we're coming into the target now. And we can see just what range we're looking at. So that's... 4,900 meters and it had some had some fuel left in there so just to look at that that's just one thing a couple of explosives active radar lots of regulators so not ideal but you can see you can get 5,000 and there's no need to go further than 5,000 in an AI controlled environment because the AI will not see ships further than 5,000 meters away using manual control Yes, you can make it go further than 5,000, but um, for me, certainly, I only work with um, AI, so there'd be no reason. So here's a medium. Now, I didn't need quite so much fuel. Again, I've made this very slow, and just two warheads again, just to show um, the potential. And then we've got the large, which, um, again fairly slow um, one fin they need less fuel tanks you can see the regulator on here only one regulator because it has a 40 second lifetime already the large missile is very easy to get uh, a long distance uh, in general so we we'll fire these both at the same time actually we can fire all of them off at the same time just just to see what they're they go like so um, you can see that obviously this is the, the the large one and it's it's coming in fairly slow that's right there's the large one fairly slowly coming in but they're all quite capable of getting out to this 5,000 meter target with some sort of payload the larger missiles are more effective and they get a larger payload but the small one you've got four missiles do remember that although the payload is less you've got four of them which has a number of advantages um, when firing at targets that large one goes in with a fair old whack when it does hit so okay it is possible to get long distance missiles. I would say that the payload is down now because of the number of regulators. Like I think in them previously with a medium missile, I'd only have needed two regulators potentially. So the range is significantly down, but it's possible to do it. You just don't need to reduce your payload. Um, okay, same with vertical missiles. Um, you might need, I've added a one turn here, although actually I don't need it um, for active radar controlled uh, missiles. So I'll just put an explosive warhead back in there. Um, if you're using 
and then for red you would need a um, one turn so if I just fire those off I think they are there we go number four so these are vertical launch missiles roughly similar size um, similar sort of layout to them uh, again they're all fairly slow on the thrust which helps with detection which we'll have a look at in a while but if we just let's just go with, with one of these last ones that fired up now these go quite high this is another change you can see as the altitude is increasing the turn rate was reducing now one other bit previously as soon as you got above 500 meters or so your, your missile would lose control now once it goes into high space yes it turns less but it will still come back down to earth rather than disappearing forevermore and not being able to target the missile but effectively losing the missile which was always annoying I felt that you know you'd made a missile that would be capable of going up and turning but for whatever reason it was decided it was in space so therefore not so uh, that's quite handy these are the medium sized missiles oh just fell a little bit short Four thousand six hundred, four thousand seven hundred. Oh well, I obviously miscalculated a little bit there. But anyway, that was, I just want to show these can you can have these on a much wider arc, and they will come back down again as long as they've got some sort of targeting solution. Talking about um, the height affecting your turning, the same is for speed and also where there was a discussion about where you put the fins so what I've set up here is some missiles um, some fairly high this one here is some small ones just to give what you could do with uh, what should we say very agile missiles so I've got a fin at the front on these now fins at the front uh, let's get this right the effectiveness of a fin is based on how far it is away from the center of the missile so theoretically the two fins at the two ends would be the best turning rate but the fin at the front would produce more drag because drag has a, a more um, is more prevalent the further it gets to the front I haven't got the exact way it's working out but um, basically it works out it's going to be slowing it down but the ad the advantage may be better putting it at the front although I think the the advantage of having one which is this front here and then one which is just away from the rear pff, I can't see there's that big an advantage maybe if you've filled up the whole rear of this missile with fins there would be suddenly an advantage but you'd have no room for any exp any warhead anyway this is a little test I nearly went over the side there uh, let's make sure I get into the right one there we go little test of um, the turning so if we just do a quick little first of all a fire just to show how these turn so you can see we've got one going wide two about normal and one was a fairly quite tight turning so basically if we let these just reload again the base unit was had a, a thrust of 1475 and five fins with one at the front and this second one is um, similar but it's only got the fins at the back and the difference between these two particular missiles was minimal uh, this one had the same number of fins, one at the front, four at the back, but is a lot lower thrust, and that's the one that, that turned the quickest. Basically, the lower thrust made it turn quicker. And then finally, I did one where I put lots of fins at the front, uh, just as a test. So just now we know what those are on the height. Let's just fire them off one more time. 
So you can see that second one, and I think it was the the the, uh, the second one uh, with the the this one here was with the low speed was turning the tightest, and I think it was this one was turning the longest slightly. Let's just fire them one more time just to work out which one took the longest to turn. Yes, it was the second one. So this was the next longest turning with all the fins at the back. But the difference... Um, I mean, it could make a difference in your... your um, missile or, or the difference between attacking the the difference on the the second two or the the uh, um, where all the fins are at the front and one it, it wasn't that big a difference i i suppose what it comes down to yes it is more turning tighter it is turning tighter that's really bad english but uh it is turning tighter but the difference really is not enough to to warrant spending too much i think on trying to min max them now we just compare the small missiles to the medium So the medium one, the small missiles turned a little bit faster, but again, not not horrend, uh, horrendously more, uh, horrendously more, that much quicker, um, considering they had four fins. Okay, so that was agility, just basically showing that fast um, fast missiles turn slower. One little bit you can do is change your ramp up, but uh, we'll discuss that and test that another time. Right. Next big question is how much damage can you do with these missiles? Now, small and medium ones, yeah, fine. We're talking big missiles. How much boom can you get? So this is basically 320,000 HE damage with a radius of 74 meters. Um, impact AP of 20 so okay that's fine um, but in my view and we'll fire this one off um, and I'll go and see at it later what is the real advantage now this one has some explosive dam uh, fragmentation so we've got 120 at 53 and a load of fragment warheads and I have set them up at different cone angles so we just set this one off as well these ones take a little while to get there. Um, right, we'll go and have a look at them now. Now, these are using the um, whole going very high type of attitude and coming down. Uh, just so happens to be. These go up to about 1,200 meters, which in old missiles would have made them useless. But in the new version, they still work. So let me just bring it forward to the impact point. And it's nearly uh, about to come in, uh, in now, so we're nearly at the impact. And that's the pure HE missile. It's done a reasonable amount of damage now. It was at 14.749, so it's about 150 blocks it's taken out there. There was a little bit of damage from some of the previous missiles. And the next one, which has got a bit of fragment in it. Again, 14.3 as a, you know, I mean, it's a lot of damage, but there is a limitation to HE, as an example, which is why I put the fragments on, of 10 meters. So it's not going to damage any block further than 10 meters away. I mean, it did a lot of damage, don't get me wrong. Um, that's why I think the fragments were in some ways better, but there's still a limit as to how many fragments um, will damage a ship. 
so um, we'll just fire the last one now the last one let's get into the right place here we go our last one is how many can I get so basically I've Max, maxed out the HE damage at 320,000, 74 meters, I say maxed out, and I've also put the fragmentation in there as well. So this has got a, a reasonable amount of um, damage. I've also put a proximity fuse on this one as well. Uh, I'll follow this one because a couple of things I just wanted to uh, highlight on here. So while this is, is going up, one thing to be aware of, if you look at the bottom of that little menu that's there, you'll notice that the detectability is 1,400 meters. That means LAM systems aren't going to get a long time um, to detect and start firing at this missile. Uh, I'll also, I'm not sure exactly which, I'm not sure exactly how that is determined I think it's pure length not the speed of the missile or possibly uh, once it's in flight it's it's different I've also noticed some differences in the LAM system and detection ranges um, one thing I, I did try I'll, I'll show you what I did try previously if you had no um, thruster on the missile it didn't get detected by LAMs my bombers used that fact quite a bit that's no longer the case. Um, uh, LAMs will detect bombs without a thruster on them, so just using APN and APN and fins, unfortunately. So yeah, that detection range at 1400 meters is a problem. Although these big heavy missiles do take a lot to, to take off. Now I'm just gonna just get over here quickly. So just ready for impact. In it comes. I mean, it's a big, very big, satisfying boom, I've got to say. Um, Damage-wise, though, you know, it's it, it has done a bit more damage. I don't know where we're down to. 14.3. Actually, that didn't make... That did not do many damage from the previous missile. Um, disappointing in some ways. I mean, to be honest, it, um, the missiles that we find at, at this Kingstead has somewhat crippled it, but I would not like to um, rely on them. Now, I'll just show you the one other little problem now with, I want to say problem, but thing to be taken into, um, into effect. So I'll be back in a second. So now we're going to use, see what the effect of that detectability is on the target so I'm going to fire some missiles off um, at our target So I fired all of our long range missiles off at the target at the moment and we can see them coming in at various angles and heights and there's a various ranges of them. Now what I did spawn in down here, yes you can see all the detection lines, is a glaive. I've turned off its AI but it should still do, um, uh, its LAM system would still be operational. So you can see some of those missiles are getting quite detected quite far, but the smaller ones actually went below the LAM system there, which is cool. So sea skimming ones on a glaive certainly are going below it, which is unfortunate for the glaive because they're below the... he hasn't got any forward-facing LAMs. Right, this is the large ones though coming in. And you can see, uh, will he get it? Or oh, he managed to get through on pure size. The lamb was not effective. So the large ones, you need quite a bit of lamb 
um, system to take them out but the smaller mediums and light ones which you can't quite see at the moment they all um, these ones here tended to uh, get taken out by the lamb system um, in my testing certainly the glaive was quite effective on um, taking out these missiles I'll show you what I found as quite a good way to get through LAM systems in a second. One other bit, whilst we're looking at these large missiles, is ammo. The reloading of missiles now takes a lot more ammo than it used to previously, in uh, real terms. I say real terms, in, in terms of... Um, the amount of ammo is is extended and um, I believe it's for a medium 100 per square and per gantry so it's 100 per gantry on small missiles it works out it's still 100 but divided by 4 so for each missile is 25 per gan um, on the gantry depending on how many if you fired all four then it's still going to be 100 and the large missiles is 400 per gantry. Now one of the problems is you must, at your reload point, you must have enough ammo. So you can see this one, this large missile here, although its reload timer is zero, because the other missiles keep on being fired, or something uses ammo, until it has enough ammo in store, so we let that go up. Uh, we've got nine six hundred, so it's at six thousand. Until it gets to the point where there is enough ammo in total to really fill that uh, launcher, it will not put a missile in there. Uh, we're getting there. We're almost there. So if anything fires now to use the ammo, this missile will not reload. So if I fired these other large missiles, um, it would stop that missile loading until it got to 9,600, which is the reason I chose that particular size, because if I made it any bigger, it wouldn't ever reload. Um, so be aware that you need enough ammo to reload a big missile in total, um, if that makes sense. I say in total, you know... Um, it, um, make sure it is loadable um, if you haven't got enough ammo then even though these counters go roll down there's not enough ammo to refill the um, gantry right one other little change which we sort of saw at one point is the Missiles have quite a good gliding ability now, which is one of the reasons they work in space. Um, they, however, they've reworked the, the system. It, it, it's allowing the missiles to have a bit of a gliding ability. Now, this one here is one I just set up. It just uses um, the ejectors to throw it up in the air. Then it'll use an APN and a fin to head towards the target. So this is a, a simple, unpowered missile and it's, it's nothing particularly special it just shows off the gliding ability now that there are in missiles in that as long as you have some sort of forward velocity or downward velocity the APN at full gain and just at one this is just one fin you could put more fins in this and it will glide quite a distance and that wasn't from didn't get too high and you can imagine that for a launched aircraft and that at touchdown was about 1700 meters and i think this only got up to an altitude of about 300 yeah 320 so if drop if you drop that from an aircraft at about 320 it's going to go a thousand to fifteen hundred meters so you can make gliding bombs potentially that's I, I think is a is a potentially good use for 
that particular gliding ability. Um, also, if your engine's cut out, you don't need engines all the way to target if you're using an APN, potentially. Okay, uh, there's one last thing I wanted to show in this particular video. There's, um, and then we'll close off, but let me just um, sort out uh, the next little target. So out there is a little glaive at about 1500 meters. So if we fire off our little guided um, missile at that, and uh, we can mostly fire off something else, but we should see the LAM system take that out, even though it's an unguided missile. Oh, it's got no thruster. Hopefully I, I hadn't put it too far away. Might be a little far actually for this particular missile. Never mind. And as I say, the glaive doesn't have any downward firing ones. Let's find something else we can fire at it to show that it is active. Let's see if these ones these ones should fire at it, I think. That's the medium miss. That's the large missile managed to get through, uh, but the medium missile did not. So the the, the damage potential, or sorry, the health of a large missile will is definitely beneficial when you're uh, firing these missiles off. Uh, just fire them one more time, one more time, just to show them off. That's it, and that was also the, fired the small missiles this time, which did, had, did not fire last time. So, yeah, against the LAM system, seems like the heavy missiles have a chance of getting through now. Yep, We've, on a glaive at least, but the other missiles, not a hope. Now, what I did, I found a good LAM, apart from big missiles, a good LAM system was putting in some small missiles and basically overloading and and basically using high speed so these use a maximum speed thruster um, and I found these to work quite well uh, against this type of system if I just fire one just to follow it in so it goes up and then a little bit of thrust towards the target and it gets up to a good 225, 200 meters a second. And yes, one with one missile doesn't do much, but because these are cheap and reload pretty quickly, you can put out quite a significant number of these missiles against uh, an enemy. And it will overload the uh, THAM system. Let's just see them, them coming in. So I found this quite an effective you know, way of doing it. It's high speed, small missiles. You can see it got a few of them, but the majority went through. And although they've only got a small warhead, you know, few frags some EMP soon start taking out some of the target uh, points um, you know quite effectively really um, and they reload a lot quicker than say trying to launch large missiles which are going to take a long time to reload these reloading uh, let's just fire them off one more time Nearly there. There we go. So 15 seconds. Um, and you can see it fired. That was there was a significant number fired off there, and it's just overloading the enemy. Now you could use them as I, I, I was trying to find a way of um, creating like a merv or decoys. 
so I did set up at one point, I haven't got it here, is a, is a largish missile and then a load of small ones that fire at the same time and all have exactly the same speed or roughly the same speed, these were a little bit quicker um, so the small ones acted as decoys for the large one or the medium sized ones that was another, just a, an interesting alternative I'd worked, I was working on as well that sort of worked, um, but I wasn't going to show it so anyway, um, that's just some ideas and how the changes actually affect some of the missiles uh, and some ideas I just was playing around with. I didn't look at torpedoes on here, I might do that separately because um, I just wanted to get this one on just normal missiles out first. Um, generally I think it's really good and I think there's a lot of room, lot of room for people to do a bit of min, min maxing but it's certainly not all doom and gloom you know it's not brilliant and or terrible you know uh, terrible uh, there is some downsides like the ranges but I like to think now that the the small small missiles the small gantries now are your basically short range missiles really yeah, up to 2,000 meters or so and then your medium missiles capable of going longer but with a reasonable warhead really you only look at 3,000 and your big missiles are really for your long range stuff only and have no agility hardly at all. So that's my little look at the missiles in general and some of the ideas I had. Um, any comments leave below as, as always. Um, I'll try to answer those if I can't sorry sometimes YouTube doesn't allow me to reply I'm not ignoring anybody um, even if your comment is quite interesting sometimes I can't reply but otherwise next I might have a look at torpedoes and see what I can do with torpedo type missiles using the new design but I'm happy with it and I have plans let's put it that way until next time Keep playing the game and have fun.